Hi everybody, it's Grace. Welcome to Eating Peace and I wanted to talk to you all this week about a very interesting phenomena that you'll recognize if you've had any kind of compulsive behavior whatsoever, whether you have been moved towards eating or doing some other kind of activity to help you change your mood, alter an experience that you're having, move into something different, handle anxiety, and this compulsive behavior, it almost doesn't even matter what it is. My specialty is food, because that's where I always went. But I also had the experience of smoking tobacco, and I've had the experience of drinking. So this movement into some sort of compulsion, whatever you're calling, where it feels like it's so overwhelming, you don't even know what's going on, you're just, that seems to be the absolute only option, the only thing you can do right now is go buy that food and that's what you're going to eat well one place one entry point one doorway in to be able to stop yourself and I know many of you have watched some of these videos that I recommend keeping a journal so that you can just simply study yourself like a scientist watch when it is that you feel compulsive when you feel more peaceful and all the gray areas in between and you begin to understand yourself much better and without trying to manage or control who you are just the awareness and seeing what it is you do and how you're moved begins to shed light on your situation and then it occurs to you when the thing is actually happening you know the gap closes on the experience of being uncomfortable and the fast as lightning impulse to go do the thing that you do that helps you shift the bad feeling that you have inside whether it's drink smoke eat whatever so the gap the gap closes on maybe I should say it the gap opens time slows down and you begin to catch yourself in the act in the actual process and then you begin to catch yourself before you do it you just naturally do it that way. There's no willpower involved. You're not trying to control yourself. You just notice before you're already in the pattern. And that is much easier on you. It's like if you are, a, if, if emotions are a wave or if a compulsive feeling is like a huge wave, if you start going down that wave and you already rise up and you're ready to crash over a giant wave, it, it sort of seems like it has to crash. It's hard to freeze it mid-flight before it lands on the, on the sand and then you know spreads out in all directions which is often how you feel at the end of your compulsive cycle after you've already engaged in the behavior and now the after effects wave crashes on the sand everything spreads you're flattened your emotions are flattened you're often in a situation depending on what you do drugs or whatever where you just feel zoned out and completely exhausted often that's the effect and um, something moves into a, a brief state of rest you might have a temporary time when um, eating something else is the last thing on your mind it sounds so horrible you know um, you've smoked so many cigarettes you just don't think you can take another one or you smoked them the day before and now it just something is terrible in your mouth anyway you just notice that there is a a phase of time where you're tired of it and you don't want to then you go off out and about into your life and things build up again right there's an experience there's contact with people there's contact with your own mind your thoughts and your belief systems and new feelings and some of these feelings trigger then the compulsive movement into this cycle which is temporarily effective or you wouldn't be doing it over and over again so the main thing I wanted to share today was something that people come to me over and over again even when they've begun to do the work for a little while begun to see about this inner process that creates compulsive behavior they're maybe done with dieting they have realized that getting a new exercise plan isn't the answer and they're ready to see more about what's happening in, in, in on their internal life because they've tried everything else Okay, one place that people come to me over and over again is they just say, it's me. 
I already know what it's like to deal with other people in the world. I've gone through a whole lot of therapy. I've learned so much about myself. Um, I've managed to kind of make my life as more stable as possible. Um, there's other areas that I've mended and fixed. I've done hours of therapy sessions over my mother. I've read books about healing your relationship with your dad. And so I've already gone through all that. I know it's just me. It really is me. I'm the problem. I should be the one to just be able to calm down. The thing about saying and believing that it is just you is you are not an isolated, separate little island on planet Earth. It is not just you. You have learned things. When you came in and you were born, you were a little bitty baby, you didn't know any of this stuff. You learned it from the people around you. This is not also a way to blame people. This is not, I'm not interested in finding out whose fault it is, and then, you know, we're going to obliterate that, and um, then everything will be fine. That's sort of the war pattern. <laughs> this is actually seeing where it is you learned what you did, what happened, where you bought and proved your belief system to be true, even if it was stressful, and begin to question it. And the only way you're going to find that is to look for outside yourself at what you're projecting, because you are the world. So you just begin by seeing who bothers you, what bothers you, what area of life disturbs you the most. Focus on that. Then you'll have it very, very clearly written down on paper, either in your journal or you can get what's called the Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet. It has six powerful questions on it and answer those questions about someone in your life you find really disturbing. doesn't matter who it is. It could be the librarian. It could be your mother or father or your child. It could be your best friend. It could be an acquaintance at work. You know the people who are there who really bother you. How they behave seems to trigger something in you. And maybe even it has something to do with food and you don't even need to know what what. Something around compulsive behavior. So. Just take care to watch that. Um, notice, give yourself some self-compassion. Self-compassion often seems to be missing in people that have compulsive behavior, com compulsive urges and cravings. Um, so if you cultivate that into your life, if you self-compassion, loving yourself, put your hand on your heart, take a deep breath saying, something is happening here and I am involved and so is the world. So is the way I'm perceiving reality. Let's look and see what's going on. It'll make things easier than always dissecting yourself and trying to fix yourself. Just relax on that project and look and see what's wrong out there. It's going to be a lot easier to identify. It's very funny, but easier. And then from that point, doing the work and questioning your beliefs, especially using the work of Byron Katie, which is so simple, then you begin to feel what's below the surface of this judgment or feel or contact with others that feels painful. All right, so that's my very strong recommendation for today is to start by judging other people who disturb you, getting that down on paper and then taking it through the work. So I'm going to end with a quote today and um, you're going to love judging those other people and then taking it to inquiry. You really are. Okay. Here Byron Katie says, Yielding or surrendering to the way of it is easy once your mind is clear. What people call surrender is actually a noticing. You notice that everything is continually disappearing and you celebrate it as it goes back to where it came from. Non-existence. The uncreated. And eventually surrender ceases to be necessary. The word implies that there's something outside you to surrender to. But you just notice what isn't, what's gone, what you can never prove existed in the first place, a sound, a name, a picture, a voice. You keep noticing until finally there's nothing to surrender to. The mind surrenders to itself. Noticing that again. You keep noticing until finally there's nothing to surrender to. All you have to do is keep noticing what bugs you. How easy is that? Just start with that. That's your ticket to freedom when it comes to compulsive behavior. 
especially food and eating. All right. Take care, everybody. Lots of love and lots of peace to you. Bye-bye.